The Paquita is the cutest porpoise I have ever seen pictures of. It is also the smallest and most threatened of the world's cetaceans. Reaching only 1.2 to 1.5 metres in length, it is found in the northern part of the Gulf of California, in an area just 2,235 square kilometres, preferring the shallow water along the shoreline. Between October the 17th and November the 3rd, 2021, a survey was carried out to establish the number of Paquitas. It was estimated that there were only seven or eight individuals, including one or two calves. The survey took place in what is known as the Zero Tolerance Area. This area is in the upper reaches of the Gulf of California. No fishing activities of any kind are permitted in this area, and no type of vessel is allowed in the area without permission. The population has been monitored with passive acoustic detectors every summer from 2011 to 2018, and it was estimated that in the summer of 2018, there were fewer than 19 Bakitas left alive, and now there are only seven or eight. The reason they have become critically endangered is because they get trapped in nearly invisible gill nets. They get trapped in these nets and suffer horrific injuries due to the nets cutting into them and they drown. The gill nets are used by local fishermen from the villages of San Felipe and Santa Clara to catch chaino and shrimp. The income from this fishing is critical to the economy of the villages. But the real problem comes from the illegal fishing of the endangered Totoba. Of the documented 128 Bikitas caught in the gill nets from 1985 to 1992, 65% were caught in Totoba nets. Commercial fishing for Totoba began in the 1920s, but in 1975 the fish was placed on the Mexican Endangered Species list and it became illegal to catch Totoba. However, the practice continues and has even boomed since 2010 due to the new and lucrative illegal trade with China for Totoba swim bladders. The swim bladders are thought to help with a range of ailments from liver disease to arthritis. They can be sold for as much as $100,000 on the black market. The demand for swim bladders is so high that it has proved impossible to control, with criminal organisations now controlling the Totoba fishery. In 2008, Mexico implemented a recovery plan for the Bikita that included a fishing ban inside the Bikita refuge and a reduction of fishing with gill nets. Since 2015, local fishermen have received compensation not to fish in the area inhabited by the Bikita, although they maintain that it is only the illegal nets used to catch the Totopa fish that trap and drown the Bikita. In July 2018, the US National Marine Fisheries Service announced a ban on Mexican imports of shrimp and other seafood caught in the Bikita's habitat. The local fishermen say that this will not help save the Bikita, as it does not address the problem of the illegal Totoba poaching. Unfortunately, the local fishermen did not receive any compensation in December 2018, and so many had to go back to fishing in the Bikita's habitat, although they avoid the refuge zone, as they always have. However, poachers are still entering the area and December 2019 saw a change in their tactics. Rather than set the nets and return a few hours later, giving a chance for the authorities and Sea Shepherd to remove the nets, they are now using a different method where multiple nets encircle and trap the Totoba. The poachers then pull in the nets and immediately cup open the live fish to remove the swim bladder and toss the bodies back into the water. There can be up to 80 boats doing this, with around 400 fishermen in them, the sheer number overwhelming the authorities trying to protect the area, and Bikitas are still being caught in them, driving the adorable porpoise to extinction. In November 2017, there was an attempt to capture up to 12 of the Bikita in order to keep them safe in a temporary sanctuary, and then release them in a part of the Gulf that had been cleared of gill nets and illegal fishing activity. Four trained US Navy dolphins acting like herding dogs were to help corral them into nets. The conservationists knew it was going to be risky, as porpoises, unlike dolphins, tend to be very sensitive and are hard to keep in captivity. However, they were hopeful after there had been recent successes in the captive breeding of harbour porpoises that had been rehabilitated after being tangled in nets or stranded. Unfortunately, one captured animal, a calf, had to be released almost immediately 
because it was showing signs of stress. A second animal, an adult female, died after being released into the sea pen. Attempts had been made to release her earlier, but she died before she could be freed. Numbers of Bakita are difficult to monitor using visual survey methods due to their small size and low numbers. However, they produce echolocation clicks almost continually, making passive acoustic monitoring of their population possible. The surveys carried out in 2021 were confined to the zero tolerance area, the last stronghold of the Bakitas. The government of Mexico agreed to strictly enforce a region-wide ban on fishing with gillnets in that area, making surveying easier for the scientists. The survey used acoustic detectors to guide visual ship transects and the findings were published in December last year. As mentioned previously, the most likely number of Bakitas seen in the zero tolerance area was about seven or eight individuals, including one or two calves. With so few Bakita, is it at all possible for the population to recover, even if gill netting were banned? Well, a paper published in May of this year suggested that it could. The scientists sequenced the genome of 20 animals that they had body tissue samples of, collected between 1985 and 2017. They estimated from this how genetic diversity had changed and how much had stayed the same. The data suggests that numbers of Bikita have always been low, with a population size below 3,000 individuals 25,000 years ago. This means that the Bikita's genetic diversity has been low for a long time and the data shows that it has not dramatically decreased over the past 30 years, in spite of numbers declining at an alarming rate. This means that they are less likely to suffer from inbreeding than other species in decline, which had originally had a large population, and so the chance of them going extinct is less. The scientists ran computer models on the likelihood of the Bakita becoming extinct under different scenarios, when no more Bakita were killed as a result of bycatch. 95% of the time, the Bakita survive. It is also likely that the Bakita are able to reproduce every year and not every two years as originally thought. Given all this information, the scientists studying these tiny porpoises believe that it's not too late for the Bakita, that there is still hope that they could survive, if only their deaths from being caught in gill nets could be prevented. And perhaps that might become a reality in January of this year, after criticism from the US, the Mexican government stepped up surveillance in the upper Gulf of California. Naval vessels and spotter planes, along with conservationists such as Sea Shepherd, are monitoring the area, searching for illegal nets and preventing fishermen from approaching the zero tolerance zone. Let's hope that they are successful and that these adorable little porpoises are given the chance they need to survive. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.